Friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I'm so excited you're here with me today. We're using the Trucking Along Bundle. This bundle, unfortunately, is currently unavailable, but it is coming back, so don't fret. Keep it tucked down in your hat that it's coming back. Um, and as the time I'm recording this, it's not available, but that doesn't mean it's not available when you're watching it. So let's talk about what I'm doing. First, I wanna start out with just punching a whole bunch of these trucks in thick, basic white cardstock. I'm punching extras of the little wheels, extras of the little piece that's the wheel well that goes over the wheel. And um, I'm doing this because I'm trying this new method. So my friend Rick Atkins, it had turned me on to this idea. Um, and he saw it somewhere, I can't remember where, right off the top of my head, but he said, you know, mass produce, and I'm like, ah, I've tried that before, but this is a whole different theory. So in this case, like making a whole bunch of these trucks in white, I can paint them, I could color them, I can do whatever I want with them, and now I have a bunch of them punched, ready to go, and I can put them in a cello bag, and they're just there. And I'm going to do the same thing with some die cuts. I'm going to pre die cut a bunch of stuff and just kind of have it all in white in bags and I can always color it. I can ink blend it. There's always ways I can add color. That's going to do two things. One, it reduces having to use colored cardstock all of the time. And as you know, some of you know that um, I have started branching out and using other products here and there. I have invested in purchasing some inks from another company, Concord and Ninth, and I don't really want to spend the money to purchase all of the cardstock. So the fix for that is going to be doing this, where I can use a bunch of white cardstock and other ink colors or whatever to color it, and I'm not having to spend a fortune on lots of cardstocks to match my inks, if that makes sense. So, um, I used the Give It A World Eyes as well because I am putting together concepts for a class. So, I'm gonna talk through this here for just a second. Um, I'm gonna do a Christmas in July card class that will be focused on fun folds and gift cards. This class is going to be released probably next week. So, well, it has to be next week, doesn't it? It's the last week of July. So, so <clears throat> it's going to be released in my vault. And everybody who's in my vault will have access to it. And I'm going to separately sell the PDF for it. So that if you don't want to purchase the vault you can still get the PDF for the class. And I do have a sample of one of the cards we're going to make in the class. Um, and I'm gonna show that to you in a minute. Let's talk about the card really quick. We're, for this card, this isn't the sample. This is just something else. So for this card, we're gonna use Mossy Meadow cardstock, eight and a half by five and a half. And then we're gonna use two pieces of four and an eighth by five and three eighths basic white cardstock, one layer on the front, one layer on the inside, and then I've trimmed down a piece of that horse and sleigh designer series paper so that that little, um, here's the full six by six, and this is how I trimmed it down, okay? So it's four by five and a quarter when I trimmed it down, but I wanted my truck to go on the front of here strategically, so my trimming process was kind of interesting, but I just wanted to show you the difference. So... I'm going to layer that on the front and then the card base itself is done. This is all there is to it. But we're going to color the truck and we're going to make some really cute little fun element for the sentiment for this card. And then I'm going to show you guys the cute gift card holder that's part of the class. So here's what I'm going to suggest. If you want to make sure that you can get in on the class and hear about what it all is going to be, then you're going to want to go to the description in the in this video, go to the link that says get my emails. There's an email link there. You sign up to get my emails and you will get emails in your inbox that have information about my classes, my events, different things like that. I'm um, undecided at this point if I'm going to make this a class that has kits or anything like that because Miss Deborah is going out of town. <laughs> 
So Miss Deborah is the person that cuts and preps. Okay, here's the card. Let's go back to this. This is the gift card holder. Is this not the cutest, sweetest little thing you've ever seen? Ah, yes it is. So this is one of the cards for the class. And I absolutely love this gift card holder. And um, then it's got the little belly band that slides over the top. And I'm not going to show you how to make this card because this card is part of that class. But I am going to show you how to color the truck. So I'm going to use Copic markers. And I obviously sped this way up because coloring takes a long time. And I tried to be a good girl and show you the colors on screen so that you were familiar. Now you could easily do this with any other alcohol-based marker. It doesn't have to be Copic markers. I've just been using my Copic markers more lately because I'm trying to learn how to use them better. So um, I used them here and I absolutely love how this little truck came out. I think it just is adorable. I'm coloring the wheels black. And then I'm going to color the little um, window. Whoops, I went out of focus there. Uh, I'm gonna color the little window in really light blues. So it's a B00, B0000, <laughs> and then a B with five zeros. So it's like light blue to lighter blue to lighter blue. And um, I'm using my Sweet Petunia grid paper to color on top of. If you need some of this grid paper, I'll link to Misty, the Misty store down below. I am an affiliate with My Sweet Petunia, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to use my affiliate link. So I will make sure to link to uh, My Sweet Petunia down below. And here I'm using uh, C5, C3, and C1 to color these little wheel wells. And then we're going to add just one other little element to the truck when we put it together, and I'll show you that. So this is how you color this truck. Now you could do this a million ways. You could just use an ink pad right over the top of it. You could use a watercolor brush and uh, ink refills. You could ink blend on top of the truck. I mean, seriously, there's lots of ways you can color it. So I thought this was just a neat idea to share one, how to use up your white cardstock scraps. Two, how to save a little money, right? I mean, we are in a time right now of uh, things are a little more expensive and stuff like that. And I've had a couple people comment about my creative vault. And so we're going to get into that because we're going to have story time too. So um, last Saturday, I started a story and I'm going to finish it today. So don't fret. Let me say that right up front so you're not already wondering. But I started a story about our 4th of July and I said in the video, which I've learned my lesson, everybody put your pitchforks away. Um, I said in the video, well, maybe I'll finish this story in the vault. First, I want to explain why I said that. I had this moment where I started the story and then I thought to myself, maybe I should not tell this story publicly because it's not really about me. It's about a friend of the family and something medical related. And I thought... It was like my brain was thinking that as I was saying it. Does that make sense? So essentially my mouth got ahead of my brain and then I was like, well, and then in my head I'm thinking, well, I could just finish it in the vault and then it's just people who are in the vault and that's a more private scenario, right? So several of you got pretty upset about me saying that and some of you who, by the way, have like never commented on my YouTube channel before, which I thought was kind of funny. And so two things. One is people were like, that's so wrong to like say you're going to finish it somewhere else. And I want you to understand that that, that my intent was not to be like, oh, I'm going to start this good story and then I'm going to finish it somewhere else. It was literally a process of thinking like I was thinking while I was saying it. My videos are not scripted. My Saturday videos especially. These videos are literally like me imagining sitting down with you, having a cup of coffee, hanging out and talking. And sometimes I have to remember that it's not always my story to tell. Does that make sense? So, so that's what was going through my head as it was blurting out of my mouth. So there's that. I have foot in mouth syndrome. 
Secondly, I had several of you comment and say, I cannot afford another subscription or I am on a fixed income and those types of things. So I want to say to those people, it was not my intent to be insensitive about that at all. The ones that got me a little bit were the ones that were like, I can't afford another subscription. I'm like, well, if you already have subscriptions, you can always swap, right? Like we do that. Sometimes we use, sometimes we have Peacock, like the TV subscriptions. We have Peacock, then we'll cancel that and we'll get like Disney Plus. And then we'll cancel Disney Plus and we'll get Hulu. So, I mean, we don't always have all the subscriptions at the same time. So I will just offer that bit of like insight for you is that if you can't afford extra subscriptions, try the Creative Vault out and cancel another one and then come back, you know, and then cancel the vault and go back to, you know what I'm saying? So like you can spread the love and also you get more you, you can get more content. So anyway, all of that is to say my intention was not to be insensitive, unkind, gimmicky, or any of those things. I was literally, I was thinking as I was talking and it upset people. So I am sorry for that. That was not my intent. Okay, here, back to the card, under the truck, I'm just going in with a C5, that C5, C3, C1 combo to make a shadow. High insight, I wish I would have just left it with the first shadow that I put and not added all the extra shadow that I'm about to do. I ended up kind of not liking how much shadow there was, but probably that's a little more realistic. I don't know. Anyways, all in all, it still ends up being a super cute card. It doesn't matter. So let's get to the story. Um, I'm going to be really vague about who is involved in this. But basically, um, we have a family friend who has a child who is um, neurodivergent. So she is an incredible person, both my friend and the child. And they were coming out to the 4th of July fireworks, which were actually on the, the 3rd of July. So, um, without going into great detail, she had a medical episode, a seizure, and it happened at, in process to joining us at the fireworks. My husband and my cousin, my cousin's husband, kind of like had to rescue her from the situation and then bring her over to where we were. And then from there, she ended up going to the hospital and breaking her foot. Okay, like, or her foot was broken. So that's it. That's the story. Is that the version I would tell in the vault? No. But that's the version I'm going to give here because that is the version I feel like is okay to give publicly. So that's what happened. That is the story that I was going to tell. And then my brain or my heart or God or somebody was like, mm, maybe you shouldn't tell that. So... I hope, I hope that makes sense. Now you know what happened, okay? But I'm not going to go into lengthy, great detail about all the ins and outs of it here. So if you want lengthy, great detail, that is what the vault is for. And that is what me and my sister go live every week, or every week, every month. Um, and we talk about things and it gets detailed and it's, open and honest and it's not a place that people feel the need to be judgy or come down on us about things we say and stuff like that. So I'm not saying that that's really bad here on the public YouTubes. I'm just saying all in all, that's the story. That's what happened. So we're going to move forward because I have way more stories to tell you that are totally fine because they're all about me and like the inner workings of other everything else. So Moving forward, 4th of July, we went to Main Street to do a fireworks thing. And, um, okay, so first we were supposed to go to a parade at 10 a.m. That did not happen. Everybody was toast. So, of course, like I told you guys before, we ended up with like the 100 plus weather the weekend that everybody got here for a family visit. 
And then on the 4th, it was cooler, but everyone was really drained. So we didn't end up going to the parade like we were supposed to, which I'm really bummed about now because apparently it was really good. And they honored a friend of mine who has just come through her final treatments of breast cancer. And so I was kind of sad that I missed out on all of that, but it's okay. You know, such is life. So the kids, excuse me, the kids swam. We had a great day. And then we went to Main Street to set off fireworks. And you're probably like, why would you go to Main Street to set off fireworks if you don't live in California? (laughs) So here's the deal. In the state of California, you know, every summer, how you see on your news station in the United States, no matter where you live, how California is basically burning to the ground. Okay, well, it's because, you know, we have a lot of fire suppression that has happened here by or haven't had fire suppression no is it the other way around yeah so anyways basically they quit letting people log they quit maintaining the forests and so what happens is something catches on fire and it just ignites and it's like a matchstick because california is dry and hot we don't have humidity so anyway All of that is to say there are laws in California about fireworks. And this is one thing that I feel like every Californian can agree on. (laughs) So half of California leans more conservative. Another half of California leans more liberal. And that's why I make that little comment that like all Californians can agree on this is that we are all scared of fire. All of us. So having strict laws and rules around fireworks i think most californians are totally fine with like they're on board for because we have had you know family visitors from out of state before that like make little comments about like well of course in california they don't let you know laws 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 i'm like no when it comes to fireworks i'm super glad there's so many laws um so you have to go to main street to set off the fireworks and they are not like the big crazy ones that you see in the midwest and east coast and stuff where they like go in the air and all of that they're really mild in comparison and so the whole town where i live i live in a really small community so the whole town gathers on main street and everybody sets off their little fireworks on main street and this year they brought in um, they brought in food trucks, they had a band, and what else was there? There was was there a couple of vendors? I don't think there were. I think it was just food trucks. So you could eat dinner, which I was super happy about because you know, when you host people at your house, you're cooking like nonstop. I felt like I was cooking constantly. So I was super happy to not have to cook that night and have everybody get their food at the food trucks. So everybody ate out at the food trucks. And the nice thing was there was a Mexican one, Mexican food, um, like an Asian fusion food. And for those of you who don't live in California, I don't know if you have Asian fusion everywhere. Asian fusion is like when they take like Asian food and mix it with like Mexican food. So like a tuna taco or something like that. Does that make sense? So it's like tuna that's been maybe marinated in soy sauce and um all that kind of stuff and then they mix it with putting it in a taco so then it's asian fusion anyway just in case because not everybody's aware of those things um so they had several taco trucks they had a pizza truck so yeah it was really good like everybody got to eat everyone had fun um you could bring your ice chest, you can bring your chairs, like, it was fantastic. We had a great, great, great time. Loved it. Um, and then we came home from that, and it was late, but the guys were not done hanging out, so my husband and my uh, cousin's husband hung out for quite a bit longer, and yeah, the whole week was just awesome. And then the following day was a lake day, so we went to the lake all day and took Um, our family out on the boat and the kids played in the water and they tubed we have a tube to pull behind our boat 
which we definitely know now that we need a new one because the one we used wasn't the greatest. Um, and we spent all day in the lake. I got sunburnt. I haven't been sunburnt in years. I had covered my entire body, but I missed my chest. So my chest got sunburnt and like the top of my thighs, which by the way, were only exposed to the sun for like 20 minutes, you guys. <laughs> And in that my amount of time, I got a pretty good burn on both places. So I was a little annoyed about that. Um, I don't wear sunscreen. I just cover my body. I don't like the way sunscreen feels. And more than one time in my life, sunscreen has given me a rash. So if you have a sunscreen suggestion for me that's like more of a natural approach, let me know. All right, here's the finished card. We're talking all this summer stuff and we made a Christmas card, right? <laughs> But Christmas in July, baby, I'm just loving it. And then this is the little gift card holder that will be part of that class that I told you about. And there will be more information coming out about the class very, very, very soon. Um, I'm just trying to stay above water, kids, really, truly. Between the pigs, the horse, the visits, all the things of summer, um, I'm getting there. I'm making it happen. I was super proud that I got a video up for you today. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. If you need any of the products that I use today, you can shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com for Stampin' Up! products. Any other products I used, I will list over on my blog, and you can shop through those links. Some are affiliates, some aren't. So thank you for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you guys again very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.